G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru. Today I've got a quick demonstration using Revit and Dynamo and today we're looking at a custom tool built by a company called Nonica. Um, you can find uh, the add-in that I'm going to be showing you today at the link uh, that I'm showing on the screen now. But otherwise what we're focusing on today is sorting our Dynamo scripts into a toolbar. You might have seen me covering this in past videos in a demonstration of another tool called Dino, which is another great option, but I actually think this one's a little bit easier to manage. Um, and I'll show you how I've used it to set up a couple of scripts that I run on a regular basis, and I look forward to seeing what you can do with it as well. Anyway, let's get started. So on Nonica's website, it's very simple to download and install the tool. You just download the installer here, um, and run it and that's about as simple as it is. It's going to apply itself to all relevant versions at once I would suggest to the developers they do choose uh, add an option to choose which version To install this into because you may not necessarily always want it in every build of Dynamo Ideally you would but you never know and a lot of other competitors or alternatives do offer this option Having said that once you've installed it um, there are some instructions for what to do but it's very simple um, this is the best thing about the tool easily the best feature just how simple it is to set up how easy it is to use especially for someone that doesn't even use Dynamo. Um, some of the other competitors or alternatives uh, do rely on the user understanding a little bit more about how to set these things up. But once you have installed it and reopened Revit you'll find in this case a Nonica toolbar. Now I've already set up a few scripts you can see here, but as you can see, I think in this case we're allowed to support 12 scripts at once, which is great. I don't believe you can support more than 12 scripts, but it's great if you have a little toolbar of scripts. These are actually things I use with my template and my content all the time. Um, now you will see this initially for each script, so there is no script nominated. If you just drop this down, um, you can set up both a script and an icon. So I can just navigate to a Dynamo script. Uh, for example, I'm just gonna copy this location where I'm storing all my Nonica scripts. And I am renaming them as well, just to make them human readable because they're gonna show their name as the ribbon name. So you may wanna make that more human readable. So in this case, I'll just set a sheet by, and I'm, I'm using a data shapes interface for this particular script. I'll show you why you might wanna do this. Um, as well as this, we can set up an icon. And by default, Nonica actually gives you about 50 icons to use, which is brilliant. Um, they cover a lot of features and things you might want to represent. But having said that, you can also make your own icons. They just need to be 32 by 32 pixels and in a format that ideally supports an alpha channel like PNG. Um, in this case, you can see that they're all you know, fairly useful icons, like things like set up, set up settings icons, um, a hand grenade if you want to purge things. Um, I really like some of those icons. They're pretty fun. And of course, the good old lightning bolt. Um, so it's a really well set up integration that I think is easy to get started with very quickly, especially if you're not looking to develop your own icons and you just want something that works straight away. Now the first time you do run a script from Nonica, it will be a little bit slow because it is going to have to open Dynamo as a background process that you can't see. So that it, it won't necessarily run like an add-in straight away, it does it still need to deploy a few things as far as I can tell. Now at the moment, this particular script that I've written, I'll just show you it. And all it does is it sets the sheet field values for approved by, designed by, checked by. Um, and it does it on the basis of, um, in this case, just every sheet in the model. So it's usually made for Dynamo Player where you can specify the inputs in the settings, but Nonica doesn't let you do that like most of these types of tools. So you will need to be aware that if you do have a script where you're relying on is input, um, it's not gonna be possible using something like Nonica, but every other tool like this has the same limitations and the same workaround in this case as well. So in this case, the workaround I am gonna use is gonna be by building one that uses a data shapes interface instead. So in this case, I'm just building up an input. And in this case, I'm actually picking which sheets I want to actually apply this to. And then just building four text box fields for the user to specify. So it's actually probably a better script. Um, data shapes is really essential for using these types of packages. Without it, you can't really construct a user interface in a way that works because this will run the user interface first as part of running the script. So if I do run the one without the user interface, you'll see that it will just run. It's gonna just, just run whatever the script does without even doing anything. So this is good if you use things like um, scripts that rely on things you have selected to do a predetermined process, but otherwise not necessarily suitable because I obviously can't go and tune all those inputs. Instead, if I run the one with a data shapes interface built into it, um, I'll be given my user interface first as part of running the Dynamo script, which is perfect. So it's, it's more like a plugin when you run it this way. So I can just take all my sheets that I want to, and I can say that, you know, approved by is AAA and designed is DDD. 
CCC, DDD. So I'm just I'm just making the nominal values now. I can then set them, and you can see now that the script is essentially run through Nonica. Um, so I think that if you do use this, definitely learn more about data shapes if you haven't used it before. It is definitely one of my favorite Dynamo packages. Um, but once you've configured these with interfaces, essentially you've got a little Dynamo toolbar that you can just run whenever you want to run a script. It's so much easier than having to manage something like Dynamo Player or Dynamo itself. And these scripts can obviously live in different folders when you run them as well. So it's really nice um, if you do just want to run things sometimes, but not necessarily all from one Dynamo Player folder. So a brilliant tool, um, definitely worth trying it out. And just a reminder, it's free. Um, as far as I'm aware, it's just going to remain free. It's a great way for Nonica to market what they can do. Um, and I really think it's a great addition to the options that we have um, in order to deploy our scripts. So try it out today and um, hopefully you like it. So there we go. So a great little way to manage a small set of Dynamo scripts. I think this is perfect for something like a sole trader or a very small business with few users to manage. Um, obviously where deployment isn't as challenging. I do think that it is probably not necessarily the best solution if you're looking to deploy across a large company or a large set of users. In this case, there is hopefully some features that maybe might be integrated into this tool in the future. For example, the ability to swap different sets of scripts over so that you have task specific sets of Dynamo scripts that can be easily swapped in and out, as well as that an option for ways to deploy or load in scripts from a server-based environment so that you can deploy this at a company scale uh, would be ideal. But again, it's a free tool, so I don't necessarily expect that this should do everything and anything. Having said that, if you are looking for a similar tool that's not free, but really does suit a large-scale company integration, definitely check out Orchestra by Data Shapes. Um, it is also a very similar tool in what it does, but it does it on a large scale. Again, not free, but definitely worth looking into. But if you're looking for just a free, simple solution, this might be the one for you. Um, personally, I'll be using it myself for a while because I do have a small set of scripts that I use on a regular basis for my work, especially with my templating. So it's perfect for me. Anyway, if you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so. And I look forward to seeing you in future videos. Thanks, take care. Bye.